Now, before we get into the word, let's have a word of prayer. God in heaven, Lord, thank you for this Sabbath, and thank you, Lord, as we open your word to talk about the subject of prayer, and I pray that it may be a blessing to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, for some of these presentations, you're going to have slides. Um, like last night, Pastor Delmar had some slides. I didn't choose to do a slide, and I chose not to do a slide because my topic is about intercessory prayer. How many of you have heard that big word, intercessory, before? How many of you could spell it right off the top of your head? I may, I may miss an S, I'll be honest. But, how many of you have ever actually thought about what does that actually mean, intercessory? To intercede. To mediate on behalf of somebody else. How about prayer in general, right? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Paul says to Timothy, he says, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. But how many of you feel like your prayers are like this? How many of you, when you pray, you feel like this is who you're talking to? Some of you say no. Some of you say, be honest. I mean, sometimes it feels like that. It does. Sometimes it does. So what actually is prayer then? If you've grown up in the church, you may just hear you're supposed to pray. You're supposed to pray. Pray is good. Praying is good. Praying is good. Some of you maybe have heard it's a conversation with God, right? Okay. But what difference does prayer even make? Pastor, I've heard God knows everything. God knows all things. Why do I need to pray to God? Right? Does it even really make a difference in the grand scheme of things, though? Not only in my life, but in other people's life. Why does it make a difference? What is the purpose of even praying? Sometimes we don't stop and think about that basic questions. Sometimes the, the basics of our faith we kind of just assume, but we don't really get to the heart of it, I think. I would argue that intercessory prayer is prayer that is, is, is focused on the heart of who God is Himself, which is a God of love. And when we get instructions in the Scriptures to pray, especially intercessory prayer, it's a much deeper concept than I think we realize. First of all, again, you have a scriptural mandate to prayer, but Paul in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, again, he's saying, you know, I want you to make supplications and prayers and intercessions for kings and all of those who are in authority, right? Why am I praying to begin with? What is the purpose that I'm praying for? Why do I even need to talk to God? There's some, you know, it's, it's really interesting that the Sabbath school lesson about great controversy is, is this quarter, and I think it fits right in. Because I would argue that the great controversy theme that we believe makes prayer essential. Intercessory prayer, essential. Why? Why does it work? Have you ever thought of Why does it work? I hear some things from the audience, and, you know, God's big. But again, God knows all things, and God's will is going to be accomplished. Why does my prayer make a difference? Fair question, right? I would argue in great controversy, the theme of great controversy is that you have a God of love, an all-powerful God of love, who is trying to show his character of love to his creation. At the same time, you have an accuser against God who is constantly questioning the character of who God is. Not only that, this earth became center stage for this conflict and that we ourselves are in this drama. We ourselves are born with a tendency towards selfishness, 
we realize that God being a God of love allows for free choice. But at the same time, God is also trying to woo us to him while respecting this choice, while handling the accusations of the accuser against God. So where does prayer come in? Prayer is our conversation, not only between us and God, but our conversation for others to God. I'll start with the first one. Between us and God, make prayers and supplications. I believe the Holy Spirit works on the heart of all people everywhere. Whether they recognize it as the Holy Spirit or not, that is how we are able to make our good choices that we make. At the same time, I also recognize that we have a natural bend towards selfishness. And so what you have is a battle amongst yourself between the love that God wants to not only give to us, but to others, and the pure selfishness that we want to take up ourselves to do our own will. You have this conflicting battle back and forth internally in each and every one of us. Where does prayer come in then? I would argue prayer between you and God is many times you asking God to recalibrate your life. Recalibrate your life in a way that is in line with His will. In a way that is moving you away from your natural selfish tendencies. We all have habits. We are creatures of habit. You have habits whether you realize it or not. Now if you like those habits, that's a whole other thing. If you think that the habit that you have is good or bad, that's a whole other thing. Because sometimes we can be doing habits that we think are good, but actually aren't good for us. And to break habits, to break tendencies, is such a difficult thing. Especially when you have a natural bend towards that, especially if it indulges your own selfishness. Meanwhile, you have the Spirit of God working on your heart, trying to move you in the direction. So where does this conversation of prayer come in? You could argue that when you're praying to God, you're interceding between God and yourself to asking Him to help you. You're asking for God to help you. You're asking for Him to act on your behalf. Right? And so when you're praying to God, you're saying, God, I recognize what your Spirit has been telling me. What your Spirit has been telling me in my conscience, in my heart. Where you are trying to lead me, I recognize that. But God, I am not strong enough on my own to go where you want me to go. I struggle. I backslide. I, frankly, it even may scare me what you want me to do. I do not have the strength to do it myself. I need to be re calibrated. I need to be put in the right frame of mind. This intercessory prayer for yourself is asking God to do this for you. Because God is the only one that is able to. But why doesn't God just do it without us asking? If God is able to work on our hearts, why doesn't he just automatically all the time just do that? Why doesn't he just make it so that we don't even have to ask? Again, within the arching of great controversy, within the free agency of man, between our natural bend towards our selfishness, God is actively trying to work in the midst of that. God will not overstep. You don't want God to work in your life to the fullest extent? Did you know that you can actually tell him that? You can tell God, I don't want you to work in my life as much as you want to. God will respect that. He'll still try to work in your life, but he will respect it. At the same time, if you say, God, I want you to work in my life to the fullest that you are able to, without overstepping, God will. In fact, 
if you've accepted Christ into your heart, if you've accepted the Holy Spirit, you have allowed God to have the fullest access that he can have. Dwelling in you. How much more personal does that get? But even then, as believers, we still struggle. Though we would realize that our struggle, the process of our struggle, God is actively working even harder to help us. Prayer makes a difference in your own life. This conversation with God, it is an act of faith, by the way. Because you know what? You have to believe that God actually hears you. Have you ever stopped to think what prayer actually is? Some of you who came to our uh, week of prayer, we kind of talked on this, but I'm going to tell you right now. Have you ever stopped to think how amazing and mysterious the concept of prayer is? Because what are you doing? You are believing by faith that the words out of your mouth, the thoughts in your head, because you don't have to pray with your mouth, you can pray in your head to God. You are believing that the Creator God of this universe is able to know the thoughts, the words that are coming out of your mouth, that they reach His ear in heaven. And that he is able to even take those prayers and take them and make sure that they are given the fullest extent of his attention of every single person. Have you thought about how mysterious that is? I can't see a prayer leave my mouth. There's no magical thing that supposedly can be measured by, by, uh, by, by a radar, right? I can't go to the doctor and ask them to give me an MRI or a CAT scan or an x-ray and say like, okay, Show me where my prayers are. Can we recognize that prayer, there's an element of it that is beyond our understanding? And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. The reason that I'm okay with that is because the instruction to pray comes from the Creator, who I recognize there is a level between me as a creation and Him as Creator that I cannot understand. But I trust by faith that when the Creator God says, I hear your prayers, I take into account your prayers, the prayers matter. When you pray, it makes a difference. I have to believe that by faith, and I do. Do I always get the answer I want? No. But it, the part with praying to God directly between me and Him and by the way, this is even more amazing, is the type of conversation that God wants with prayer is like that of a friend. That, to me, is incredible. You think that with the Creator God that we need to be prostrate on the ground in a T-pose, not even daring to look up because of how holy He is, yet while God is holy and above all, that's not the character that He shows to His creation. The greatest example being Jesus Christ. God wants to talk to us as a friend. When we talk with God, like Moses, when Moses is talking with God on Mount Sinai, going back and forth with him, some may read that and go, how does Moses have the audacity to do that? Moses has the audacity to go back and forth talking with God. Or Abraham has the audacity to talk back and forth with God, to bargain with God. I would argue, and I've had scholars argue that this is actually the type of prayer that God wants from us sometimes. He wants us to wrestle with Him. Because when you have a relationship with somebody, you're not always going to be on the same footing with them. You could argue that actually by you going and talking with God and wrestling with God, it shows how much you care. And God being able to handle it shows how much He cares. What is the opposite of care but complete indifference? If God is saying, I want you to give all to me, he does not view what we say indifferently. God is not some gumball machine that you just pour gumballs in, and those are the prayers, and it fills up, and he says, good job, you filled up the gumball machine. Great. I'll look at these later. Right? I have a whole warehouse of gumball machines, of all these prayers. I'll get to them. Maybe. That's not how God treats the prayer. God treats it as an individual. Every single person's individual prayer is coming straight to his ear. It's not being stored somewhere. 
So then what about, if it's about recalibrating me between me and God, why am I praying for other people, though? What does that matter? Why does that matter? Why am I making intercessions for kings and people that I've never met? Because the same way that God is working on your heart and the relationship that God desires to have with you is the same one that he wants to have with everyone else. In fact, within this idea of this great controversy of God of love not overstepping, taking into account our free agency, the accusations of Satan saying, you're going to overstep, you cannot act. When we pray, we are asking God, giving him consent to work on us at a higher level. So when you pray for other people, what you're telling God is, I give you permission to work on behalf of those people. I am asking you to do something, God. My free agency, I can't tell you what that, how much of a measure that is, but clearly, you praying for other people allows God even more of an access within this narrative of cosmic conflict that does not constitute God overstepping. I'll say that again. You praying on behalf of other people allows God an access within the cosmic conflict in the lives of other people that does not constitute overstepping. Satan cannot say, God, why are you acting so powerfully in this person's life? You're showing favoritism. God can say, no, I have people praying for this person. They are giving me extra permission to work. So in light of that, how powerful is intercessory prayer? How powerful is it to pray for other people? Now you may say, I don't see results though sometimes, right? Sometimes the results feel like this blank board. Depends on what your perspective is. Again, this is not a vending machine thing. This is not a quarter in the gumball machine. I think that sometimes we think of prayer as such a simple little thing. It's actually an extremely complex process. A conversational, relational process between God and human beings and His creation. It is not a simple, I put in five prayers. I put in five prayers and I should get out this much. If it was that simple, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. I don't think we'd be seeing as much pain in this world as we see. So you say, why then should I pray for other people then if I don't see the result? Because we have a bias towards the outward. We have a bias towards the outward results. We have a bias towards our own timeline. We have a bias towards how we think it should be done. How boastful of us in that thinking to think that we know best, by the way. Lord, help us for the things when we pray, God, guide me. And we may be completely off course and God has to work in spite of our own ignorance. So what do I do when I don't see intercessory prayer work? Intercessory prayer is working. It is working. It is working at a level that you are not able to perceive. You see, I don't know how many people are praying for me. You don't know how many people are praying for you. But do you believe that the prayers that you are giving for someone else is allowing God to work in their life even more? God says it that way. I mean, it's a faith thing, but God says, I'm working in their lives. But where am I working? Where is God working in the lives of people that you pray for? Most of the time, those prayers are God working on who they are internally. 
we are very good as human beings of masking what's going on on the inside. We're very good at saying, I'm fine, when you're not fine. Nobody knows truly the inner battles of the person sitting next to you, unless they tell you. But I can guarantee you that even among your own spouse, if you're married, there's a level that's just between you and God. There's layers upon layers like an onion. We are as human beings of being complex. You know where the intercessory prayers are working? All levels of that onion. God is able to go right through the stuff that would take us maybe years of therapy to get through. God is digging in there, working. That is where your intercessory prayer is going. So the working of God on your heart right now, you have no idea if that is because of the prayers of the people around you. I would say it is. I would say it is. In fact, many people will never see the full results of the prayers that they've given for others. How many of you that doesn't really sit well with you, though? Be honest. I'll be honest, just a little bit. It's a little disappointing to think about, right? I will never see the full results of the prayers that I prayed for someone until I get to heaven. But I want to see it now. I hate to say it, you will not see the full result of intercessory prayer on this earth. But I also give to you this, you will have the opportunity to see it in heaven during the millennium. Intercessory prayer is essential, I said. We have to be praying constantly. We have to be aware of where we are with God and also recognize God is still actively working in this world today. Prayer is not some liturgical exercise of just, I do it and I'm good. Okay, God, I prayed, I'm good. Many times I know we treat our, our meal blessing like that because it, it's repetitive. But I would argue that the prayer that God wants between you and Him is that same type of prayer that God has with Abraham, with Moses, and dare I say, even when Jesus is talking on the cross. He says in, in Luke, he says, Father, for, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even when Jesus is dying on the cross, he is praying intercessory prayer for other people. And you know what the fruit of that was, by the way? There is fruit of that prayer that Jesus prayed that you can read about. It's not in the book of Luke, though. It's in the book of Acts. The prayer of Jesus on the cross. God, do not take away from them their ability to know you. Finds its fruit in the Pentecost preaching of Peter. It says some of those who even crucified him chose to believe. As you consider through our series here about different aspects of prayer, my challenge to you is to think the bigger picture. Because intercessory prayer, not just you talking to God personally, but when you are thinking about praying for other people, you are encapsulating, I think, the true heart of what God wants, which is to save others. But also, let us be knowing that God is able to take our prayers and know the best way to answer them, even if we don't. But we can also be accepting of the fact that God is actively working on our heart and that there are people praying for us to help us. You are not alone, is what I'm trying to tell you. There is someone praying for you. So don't feel that your prayers are like talking to a blank slate here. 
recognize how incredible prayer is as a concept. Be okay with being uncomfortable knowing that I don't fully understand it. It's okay to say that. But also know that God has chosen to tell us how it actually still works, even though you don't fully get it. Pray for yourself. Pray for others. This truly is the heart of intercessory prayer. Let us pray. God in heaven, Lord, we recognize that prayer is something fantastic that we fully don't grasp. But Lord, you have given us in your word what prayer truly means. You've shown us through the example of Jesus and through stories of you communicating with human beings throughout Scripture that you desire conversation, you desire the innermost thoughts of our hearts, and that you desire to work on all human beings and recognize that our consent for you to work means something. And we thank you that you are working in spite of the things that may try to stop you, whether they be accusations or whether they be our own free will. We thank you that you are long-suffering, patient, and kind, and that you are actively working to try to bring all into your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that our prayers matter. In Jesus' name, amen.